Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at a tremendously large diamond. This beautiful star right here that you see on your screen is actually the biggest diamond very close to our solar system and today I'm going to talk about why and how it actually happened and also talk about how one day our sun will actually most likely become the same. Welcome to What The Math. So this object is known as V886 uh, Centauri, uh, it's a star, actually a very very small but very massive star in the uh, constellation of Centaurus. And as you may have guessed, it's actually a white dwarf. Now this star is, in terms of size, only about the size of our planet Earth. You could actually place Earth right sort of next to it and it would be the same in terms of the actual volume, but mass-wise it's more massive than our Sun, so it's an extremely, extremely dense object. But unlike other white dwarfs we've discovered, this one is, I guess you could call it much older, at least in terms of the actual properties. It started to basically crystallize. It got so cool and so cold that it started to form um, a crystal-like structure on the inside which in turn made it into a kind of a diamond-like formation. In other words, if you were to actually look at the inside of this object, you would see something like this. It would have about 10% of plasma-like formation and basically what's known as the Fermi electron C. And the rest of this object, about 90% of it, is crystallized carbon and oxygen, which is usually what's left um, after this star, star becomes a uh, white dwarf. Now, in this particular case, this white dwarf is essentially a kind of a representative of what uh, we expect a lot of the white dwarfs will eventually become. First, they crystallize, they become tremendously large diamonds, and afterwards, after a few trillion years, they start cooling down and become black dwarfs and basically these tremendously large black diamonds. Now this is an evolution uh, or evolutionary process of most uh, stars similar to our sun. So in other words, if we were to go to our own solar system and if we were to take a look at our own sun, in about 5 billion years this beautiful object will actually become much, much smaller. It will turn into a uh, white dwarf. And here, um, only uh, the carbon and oxygen will remain. It will be extremely, extremely dense. And what's interesting about our own sun is that, uh, well, it will be actually a lot less massive. It's only going to be about half the mass of um, the object that you see right here, known as V886. And this object um, is one of the more massive white dwarfs we've discovered, so it's actually probably maybe even one of the largest diamonds in the sky that we're going to find anytime soon. Uh, these objects unofficially are currently referred to as uh, Lucy. It's a song that I believe is called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and so um, because of this, uh, unofficially, at least this particular object is currently known as Lucy. Uh, but our own sun, as you can imagine, after most likely about 100 billion years, it will also start crystallizing, it will start cooling down. And um, at this point, it's uh, very likely that uh, when it cools down to about 8,000 to 7,000 degrees Kelvin, it will start dimming and then uh, also turn into a very, very large diamond-like object. And eventually, uh, all of these diamonds will then become very dark and very, very black. Now, obviously, this is not a kind of a diamond that we find on Earth. As a matter of fact, this particular object contains um, a lot of carbon and oxygen, not just carbon. Uh, but because of its density and because of its properties, it's very similar to um, what a diamond is, but also at the same time, um, extremely unpredictable in its properties. As a matter of fact, if we were to take a chunk of this object and then put it on a planet Earth, it might have such a tremendously powerful reaction that it would maybe even explode, for all we know. Um, mostly because it needs that pressure to actually maintain stability. And uh, because uh, V886 is only approximately 50 light years away from our own solar system, once the humanity is capable of actually traversing such distances, basically once we become an interstellar species, this is probably going to be one of the first objects that we're going to explore because scientists have a lot of questions about these unusual objects 
and white dwarfs um, they are actually very interesting in their properties because they do resemble planets a lot more than they resemble stars even though technically this is actually a remainder of a star basically a star's core um, the way that it behaves and the way that it's formed and the way that it's essentially structured is very planetary like basically a very high density planet with a lot of temperature at the same time uh, we know for a fact that at some point all of these objects will have temperatures that are very earth-like so basically many of these objects might even at some point host some kind of a um, extremely exotic extraterrestrial life but that's still in the realm of future um, science fiction and it will take billions and billions of years before we even get to the point where a single white dwarf is born that has a temperature very similar to earth uh, most of the white dwarfs right now are still way too hot and many of them haven't even reached this crystallization form as V886. Anyway, so now you know a little bit more about the evolution of white dwarfs and how pretty much all of them will eventually become tremendously large diamonds. As a matter of fact, uh, pretty much every single white dwarf out there at some point is going to become a large supermassive diamond. So they're not going to be as rare anymore. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about the evolution of white dwarfs, our own sun, and of course about this very large, very, very beautiful diamond star known as V886. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye.